scapular dyskinesis. So this is a very common term you uh, hear these days. Uh, lots of patients uh, have this written on their OPT sheets. Uh, is it a diagnosis? Is, a, is it a physical condition? Is it a physical impairment? What is it? it is it a disease? Uh, why, why, um, why does it happen? And does it require treatment? And what is its significance? All these questions are trying to uh, uh, tackle in this uh, interaction with you. Okay, so scapular dyskinesis, it's, it has been said that it is an important uh, contributor to shoulder pain. Uh, and there are very th lots of theories and lots of literature, actually not theories, that uh, dyskinetic scapula, uh, what does it lead to? It leads to altered kinematics of the glenohumeral joint plus the AC joint. Uh, it leads to uh, altered kinematics of the muscles which are inserting on the scapula and leads to a spectrum of clinical complaints. So, so it doesn't cause a single complaint, can uh, lead to a number of complaints. So uh, that's the importance of scapular dyskinesis, but what is it? What's its definition and how do you diagnose it? So if we go back to the historical, uh, the history about scapular dyskinesis, uh, if you go back to 2003, there was a paper uh, by uh, Burkhardt, Steve Burkhardt, uh, and uh, he's a famous uh, orthopedic surgeon, uh, shoulder surgeon from US. Uh, and uh, the, he talked about basically uh, the overhead athlete the disabled overhead athlete. It was a three series paper uh, in JBJS. Uh, and I think it's available online. Uh, I think uh, it was in, uh, sorry, Arth Journal of Arthroscopy. So he talked about in three uh, uh, series of lectures, uh, why does an overhead athlete have pain? And in one of those lectures, he talked about, he gave the term called as six scapula, S-I-C-K. SICK scapula. Uh, SICK was acronym with S, I, C, and K standing for different uh, terms. And uh, these were, this was the foundation on which we talk, uh, came up to the term as scapular dyskinesis. Later on, uh, they started a uh, group of meetings called the Scap International Scapular Summits, in which they just closed door meetings, uh, people who were just doing research on scapula. And they come, came up with the term in 2007 of scapular dyskinesis. Uh, so six scapula is the older terminology which was used in the last, in the decade, uh, these, the last decade, 2010 to 2020, the scapular dyskinesis is the term. Some people use the term scapular dyskinesia. Kinesia is a term referred to a neuromuscular disorder. Uh, so not to a and abnormal movements. So this kinesis is a better term, it said. So we should stick to the term scapular dyskinesis. Six, six scapula is an older terminology and scapular dyskinesia is not a proper terminology. So, but what is scapular dyskinesis? So for understanding this, we have to understand uh, what are the scapula movements and how do we name them? I've talked about in different lectures already, just a revision. If this is uh, the scapula, the right scapula of the patient, my hand. So the movements occurring uh, in this plane are known as uh, an anterior tilt and posterior tilt. This is tilting. So anterior tilt is uh, shoulder going uh, top of uh, scapula tilting anteriorly and posterior tilt is top of scapula tilting posteriorly. So then there are rotations, upward rotation and downward rotation. I'm talking about the, uh, the right scapula of the patient. You are standing behind the patient, seeing is the scapula, this is the scapula. So upward rotation is when the chromium tilts upward. Uh, the lower water is going upward uh, and chromium is also tilting upward. This is upward rotation and downward rotation. Acromion tilts down. 
there is another uh, rotation called internal rotation on also known as protraction and retraction which is known as external rotation so you have to understand these movements anterior tilting posterior tilting upward rotation downward rotation internal rotation or protraction external rotation or retraction so external rotation retraction is scapula moving posteriorly towards the uh, vertebrae and protraction is moving along the chest wall anteriorly that is protraction or internal rotation similarly clavicle movements uh, you understand there are clavicle movements occurring when during the normal normal overhead motion so clavicle main movements is anterior rotation posterior rotation retraction is like retraction of the uh, your uh, scapula retraction protraction and elevation and depression so elevation is lateral angle moving up lateral and depression is lateral and uh, and moving down what happens when you take your arm normally overhead so normally when you uh, take your arm overhead the clavicle elevates a little but the main movements occurring as retraction and posterior rotation so main movement occurring of the uh, clavicle with your overhead movements is posterior rotation what happens with the scapula when you take your arm overhead so the scapula upwardly rotates so scapula this scapula rotates upwards okay so this is the the diagram if you see the diagram this is your upward rotation so upward rotation it tilts posteriorly so posteriorly tilting so your upper end of scapula tilts posteriorly and uh, it's in internally rotates in the start uh, starting part of your overhead movements but to get full overhead movements it has to externally rotate at the end of your terminal overhead motion so the three important movements for you to achieve a full painless uninhibited overhead elevation of your arm is upward rotation of scapula posterior tilting of scapula and external in the end external rotation or retraction of the scapula so these are the essential movements occurring which are normal biomechanics so uh, you are just looking at this video so look how the scapula is going posterior tilting upward rotation just when your arm goes up uh, overhead upward rotation and posterior tilting beautifully demonstrate in this video and there is also uh, if you notice carefully there is some external rotation or retraction at the end so this is normal biomechanics of the shoulder this you need to understand another thing happening in the glenohumeral joint when you are taking your arm overhead is the arm externally rotates so external rotation at the gh joint glenohumeral joint so when you are and is going upwards you have to have good external rotation so if you do uh, one of my favorite things to demonstrate this is that try upward elevation of arm with a uh, with thumb pointing backwards that is internal rotation try that it would not be easy to get it fully up and with a thumb facing forward try this again thumb facing forward means you are externally rotating you are easily able to take your arm overhead so you need external rotation of at the gh joint to get good and inhibited painless movement of your arm overhead so this was normal what is abnormal so opposite of normal would be the abnormal scapular motion so normally required upward rotation of scapula if there is decreased upward rotation of scapula or downward rotation of scapula during overhead motion it's a abnormal movement normally there is posterior tilting of the scapula if there is decreased posterior tilting or anterior tilting is there more this will again be abnormal movements there will be abnormal biomechanics and the normal overhead motion would not be uh, taking place again you need full external rotation or retraction of the scapula if that doesn't happen or internal rotation or protraction increases again it would be a abnormal scapular motion uh, abnormal clavicle motions would be decreased posterior rotations increased elevations 
these are the main uh, movements occurring abnormally at the scapula uh, sorry at the clavicle you don't need to remember today about the clavicle i have already talked about clavicle in my separate talk on ac joint biomechanics let's focus today on scapula so again going back the abnormal movements of scapula would be decreased upward rotation or increased downward rotation decreased posterior tilting or increased anterior tilting and increased protraction or internal rotation abnormal humeral motion is basically limited external rotation if not able to externally rotate you not be able to get your arm fully overhead with normal biomechanics so Thank you.